just a few hours after the death of Queen Elizabeth, Rupert Murdoch's Fox Corporation snuck out its 82-page proxy statement for 2022. It was good news for shareholders of News Corporation and Fox because lo and behold, Lachlan and Rupert actually took a pay cut. It was revealed that Lachlan's pay was cut by US $6 million to just the paltry sum of US $21.7 million. That's about 30 million Oz. And Rupert, for his part, the 91-year-old Rupert Murdoch, he's battling along as Fox's joint executive chairman now on US $18.4 million. So he's taken a cut as well. Very shareholder friendly of them. Now, Stephen Mayne, the guy who founded Crikey, who's getting the, the mob, which is getting sued, uh, ironically, by Lachlan Murdoch for defamation, he's written a piece for us which compares the Queen and Rupert. And actually, there are obviously huge, enormous differences between the two, but there are quite a few similarities as well, because both the Queen and Rupert Murdoch lost their fathers in 1952, sudden deaths for both, and both inherited then the positions which they still occupy this year. They both ruled for a long, long time, the Queen for 70 years, and if Rupert makes it till next August, he will surpass the Queen's 70-odd year tenure. The other thing they have in common is that both don't sue media outlets, but they also have in common the fact that their children do and have and are, in fact, Lachlan Murdoch suing Crikey for defamation and, of course, Prince Harry suing Rupert Murdoch's news corporation over the UK phone hacking scandal. So unlike the ABC, we didn't manage to send 30 people to London on a junket to cover what could have been covered by a couple of people, the passing of Queen Elizabeth, but we did accidentally have somebody there, our reporter Callum Foote, who was at the tail end of his six-week vacation, found himself in London, so he decided to interview the ABC people. Lo and behold, he came back with no comments all round. Do you think the ABC should be sending 30 people to cover this event? Is that overkill? Is it super overkill? So you can read Callum's story on the website. And finally, a note just on the crikey defamation. We've spoken to quite a few lawyers. We've written a piece about it. The imputation will be hard to defend for crikey because there's no direct proof, well, none that we know of as yet, that Lachlan Murdoch conspired with the Trumpites over the January 6 uprising in Washington. So whether Fox News fomented it or not may be irrelevant. And the key swing factor here in the defamation is that judges like people to turn up to back up their claims, to testify, to get in the witness box. Now, Lachlan won't probably want to do that because then he'll open himself up to scrutiny. But if he doesn't do it, his case, his chances in the case are dramatically reduced because judges do like people suing to turn up to testify in their own proceedings. So there you have it. Still a bob each way. Crikey's making plenty of money out of it, which is good for independent journalism. But generally with these things, the mob with the most money prevails. That is the problem with defamation laws. And the huge irony here is that in America, Lachlan could not have sued. Far worse things are said about him and about the family over there, but he couldn't sue because they don't have draconian defamation laws like we do in Australia.